This video is sponsored by Rhizom Lab, the creators of my unwrapping software of choice, Rhizom UV. During the upload month of this video, my viewers can enjoy a 20% discount on Rhizom UV by going to rhizomlab.com and using the code DIGITALMEAT at the checkout. I will also be giving away free licenses for Rhizom UV during this month, so make sure you're following me on Facebook and keep an eye out for those giveaway posts. Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat again, and in this Cinema 4D video, we're going to be taking a look at the texture tag menu and all the items within, and just go over them. Um, so, let's get on with it. Okay, we've got a scene set up here. Um, as you can see in the object manager, we've got something called scene. You don't have to worry about any of this, because the only things that we're interested in is this cube with a bender former on it, and uh, we've also got this checkered material you can see down the bottom here has been applied to this cube. So let's have a look at the first thing in our list of things to look at. You can see it's all grayed out at the moment. And what we're interested in is from this generate UV coordinates all the way down to the bottom here. And this is essentially our texture tag menu. So let's start at the top, generate UV coordinates. This is um, pretty self-explanatory actually. So this cube has got this checkered material applied to it. And if we click on the texture tag, you can see that the projection has been set to cubic. Um, it's also important to note that this cube object has been made editable so it means that its points are um, accessible to us so if I go to point mode I can actually select the points on this cube if I select it and move th move them around it's uh, it's not a parametric object the reason I've got this bend on it is because this texture tag is set to a cubic projection and um, this is what it looks like but the problem with that is when you want to deform it in some way or move points around um, this happens so as you can see the projection remains the same it's not stuck to the surface of this object so it's almost like this object is moving through a projection of that texture through space onto its surface so what we need to do is if we set this back to zero to make this texture stick on the surface of our object we can assign uv coordinates so we can actually do that with our projection set to cubic, we can select this texture tag, and then we can go to the tags menu and click generate UV coordinates. And if you keep an eye on this projection down here, when we do that, generate UV coordinates, it'll ask us, do we want to uh, include sub objects? Because it's seen that there's a bend there. We don't need to worry about that. And you can see that this is now flipped over to UV mapping. It looks exactly the same in this window, but the projection is now UV mapping, so it's using the UVs of this object. And if we look up in the object manager, we can see that this object now has a UV tag. So if we go back to the bend now, and we alter the strength, we can see that this is now moving with our object. We've actually assigned that cubic projection as UVs. Okay, I've got another scene set up here. This time I've got a sphere um, using the same material, but this time we've got a sphere with a bend on it. The texture tag is actually, the projection is set to shrink wrapping. It's much the same as the first scene. So if I go to bend and uh, I use this strength to bend this, you can see that our sphere is being uh, deformed and it's kind of moving, moving through the space just as before with the cube. It's not stuck to the surface. It's kind of moving through the uh, projection. So let's put this back to zero and do exactly what we did before. So select our uh, tag, go to the tags menu and say generate UV coordinates. No to this. And much as before, if we uh, up the strength on our bend, we can see that that projection has now been stuck to the surface of our sphere and is moving accordingly. This is where the next thing in the menu comes in. We've got this option here of assign UV coordinates. So we've already got a set of UV coordinates. We've got this UV tag and it's saved this shrink wrapping projection that we did have. It kind of baked it into the UV tag here and that's why it's stuck to the surface. But with assign UV coordinates, we can do something a little bit different. So this uh, sphere has now got UV coordinates and like I said, if we go to this tag, it's saying UV mapping. Well, let's change this to something else. I'm going to change this to maybe flat. And it's changed the entire thing, even though we've got this UV tag here. 
And the reason that this has changed the entire thing is because we've told this texture tag, we're no longer using the UVs, we're using a different projection. So it's kind of ignored what's here, if you like. So if we flip back to UV mapping, we'll have what we baked into this UV tag. But we can actually do something quite special. We can add to our UV tag with different projections for different parts of the model. So like I said, if we go to flat, we can go here. And if I go into polygon mode now, make sure my um, sphere object is selected, go into polygon mode and select these polygons here. I'm just gonna grow this selection by using UY. I'm gonna do that a couple of times. So now we've got this selection here. I can actually select this tag, go to the tags menu and say, assign UV coordinates. And you can see that it's just assigned coordinates just for that bit that I had selected. So if I come out of this now, you can see that this tag is flipped back to UV mapping and it's retained the UV mapping that we had baked into this tag before. And it's also done this new selection here for flat mapping. So it's a combination of the shrink wrap that we baked into the UV coordinates and with our selection, the flat mapping. Let's do it again. Let's uh, choose this. Let's go down to, uh, I don't know, cubic, something like that. And what I'm going to do is actually choose this texture mode, choose my scaling tool and scale this all the way down to something like this. So it's very, very dense. And as before, I'm going to go back into um, polygon mode, select my sphere, and I'm going to make a selection. So uh, grab our select tool. I'm going to select these and yet again, I'm going to say UY, UY and just grow our selection out so it's nice and big. Make sure the tag selected, go to the tags menu and say assign UVW coordinates. And bang, we've got another selection. So now if I go back to model mode, you can see that we've got a mixture of projections on this object now, but it's all contained within our UV coordinates. So if we go to our texture tag you can see that the projection is uv mapping so it's been informed by this uv tag but we've got our original shrink uh, shrink wrap projection baked into the uvs and our flat and that cubic that we just done as well okay we've got another scene and we've got a box in this scene it hasn't got any uh, materials on it uh, and the next thing on our list we're going to look at is uh, this fit to object that you can see that is grayed out at the moment so this material here is just a flat color at the moment, but I'm going to populate it with the texture. So let's load in this digital meat texture into this slot. And if we go in there, we can see that it's not a square texture. And I've, I've chosen this on purpose, actually. If we have a look at it full size, this is what it looks like. And as you can see, it's not square or anything like that. And this will suit our needs for the time being. So with that in mind, let's put this material on our cube. Okay, so now it's on our cube and you can see something curious has happened. As we pointed out a minute ago, this texture is not a square texture. It's uh, wider than it is tall. But in the Cinema 4D scene, you can see that it's been stretched vertically so it fits the entire face of this cube. And this is essentially what fit to object actually does. So if I was to uh, grab the texture, you can see that it's UV uh, set to UV mapping. Let's set it to cubic and uh, I'm going to change over to texture mode, go into my scale. I'm just going to scale it down. So it's tiled a few times. If we have this uh, tag selected, go to our tags menu. We can actually say fit to object and that will make sure that the texture fits the entire space that it's occupying. Now, by doing this, it actually does distort the image slightly, and that's why it's called fit to object, because you are fitting the texture to the object's dimensions. Now, you can actually do the reverse of that, which is actually fit to image. If I was to uh, choose this um, texture tag, go to tags, and go down to fit to image, you can see that it's grayed out. And that's because fit to image only works with a flat projection. So we're currently in cubic, so obviously that's going to be no good. So let's change this over to flat. And you'll see that this is how our texture is being projected along the Z here. You can see the uh, outline of this. Hopefully it will show up in the video. Um, so let's come out of texture mode there and uh, choose our material tag. 
go to tags and say fit to image. Now, when you hit this, it'll actually open a uh, dialogue window up because it wants to know, well, what image am I fitting the material to? In our case, it's this little thumbnail here. So I'm gonna double click this. And now you can see that this actually does match the dimensions of, of our original image. So if I come down into our texture tag and turn off tiling, it won't tile the image. And if we can compare that to the original image, you can see that the dimensions in Cinema 4D actually match the dimension of this image. And if we wanted to now, in this view, we could actually alter the, um, the box. We could actually move these points up. In fact, if I go into edge mode, select our cube, it's actually not editable at the moment. So I'm gonna hit C, select the edges at the bottom here. And now we could actually alter our object to match the texture because now we know that this texture is exactly the right proportions. Okay, let's move on to the next item in our list and that will be this fit to region. But before I click on that, I'm actually gonna enable our texture mode so you can see what the texture actually looks like here. Go into fit to region and you can see our cursor's changed now. And that's because you can click and drag. So I'm just gonna click and drag here across the object and let go. And you can see this is what it's done. Now, if I scoot around the other side of this object, you can see that the plane of our texture has now changed. You can actually do this yourself if you wanted to, if you go into rotate mode while you're in the uh, texture tool, you can actually change the way its orientation and how it's being projected. But with the fit to region option here, that's unnecessary because you can just do this and uh, it will be facing the view. Okay, we're back to our cube with this material applied to it. And if you look at the texture tag, you can see that it's set to UV mapping, which is fine. Uh, let's have a look down our list. Uh, the next thing we've got adapter object axis. Now, if we select our object and we're in the move tool, you can see its axis here and it looks like our texture is actually matching our object axis. So we could actually mess this up a little bit. If I go uh, and change this to cubic mapping with our tag selected, go into the texture mode and rotate this, you can see that that box projection is now not aligned with our object. So with this material tag selected, go to tags, go down to adapt to object axis and it will clip it back. So if you ever need that, it's nice and easy. You don't have to uh, reset the rotation coordinates for this texture bounding box. You can just use that command up there. Next on our list, we've got adapt to world axis. So you may be in a situation where your cube is not aligned with the world. So if I rotate our cube like this, we can actually make sure that our texture is aligned with the world, even though our object isn't. So I've gone back into the texture mode and uh, selected my material tag. And if we go down to adapt to world axis, you can see that the axis of the texture space is in alignment with the world, even though our object isn't. The next option in our tags list, if we look at it, is adapt to view. And yet again, with our material tag selected, if we go and click adapt to view, it will make sure that whatever projection we've got is aligned to our camera, uh, how we're looking at the scene. So if I spin round now, aligned to the view that we had a minute ago, and now I've got this new view. If I did it again, adapt to view, it's adapted to that camera position. I'm just gonna align it back to the object axis. So we've got it back like this. Again, with the material tag selected, we can go down and have a look at the last couple of things here. We've got mirror horizontally, so it will just flip our texture in the horizontal. And you can see that it's backwards now. We can do that again to put it back the way it was. And you can do it vertically as well. Mirror vertically flips this upside down. So that is it. That is everything you need to know about the texture tag menu from generate UV coordinates all the way down to the list to mirror vertically. Hope you found that helpful and I'll see you in the next one. 
If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.